today we start talking about transformations in geometry. Transformation simply means a change. If I transform something, I'm going to change it. There's a lot of people who go to the doctor, to a plastic surgeon, to transform their looks. They want to change their looks. Make something about them change. Chapter 9-1, yep, we're going to skip all the way over to chapter 9-1. The first thing we're going to look at is reflections, but before we talk about reflections, we need to talk about the transformations. Transformation, like I said, means changes. Now, there's four types of changes in geometry we're going to talk about. Number one, we're going to talk about reflections. Reflections are just what you think they are. You look in the mirror, you see a reflection. Okay? You look at it, and your right hand seems to be on the left-hand side. Your left hand seems to be on the right hand side. Things seem to be backwards from what they are. They've been flipped. They're reflections, okay? Another one that we talked about, transformation that we talked about, is translations. Translations. We're going to move it. We're going to slide it. We're going to slide it over. All right? Another one we talked about is rotations. We're going to rotate it. We're going to turn it in some, some form or fashion, either about a point or... Um, around in some form or fashion. We'll have a point of rotation about which we will, we will rotate that figure uh, some sort of degrees. And then there's another one called dilations. Dilation is an actual change in size. We're going to increase the size or we're going to decrease the size. Now dilations, typically when you think about dilations, the thing I think of is things get bigger. Like I go in and they dilate my eyes. Well, the pupil of my eyes gets bigger I can't, you know, stand the light. I have to wear shades. Dilations in this case is not just getting bigger, but it can also get smaller. We'll have a scale factor involved. Now, these four transformations that we'll talk about, three of them do not change the shape or the size of the figure. They change only the orientation or the location of the figure. We call those isometry transformations. Okay, if there is no change in the shape or size, only in the orientation or the location, in other words, where we place it, how we place it, turn it, or whatever else, we call those isometry transformations. The isometry transformations are reflections. Okay, why? Because we don't change the shape or the size. We just reflect it. Translations, we don't change the shape or the size, we're going to move it. Rotations, we don't change the shape or the size, we're just rotating it. Now, dilations, we change the size. This is not an isometry transformation. Sometimes, and, and, and key words you need to get down. Why? Because you're going to see this on a test. You're going to see it on a chapter test. You're going to see it on your six weeks test. You're going to see it on your semester test and the end of year test. Knowing whether or not something is an isometry transformation is important. Did you change the shape or the size? No, then it's an isometry. And we'll use that word extensively. Okay? Transformations change. First one we're going to talk about is reflections. Another item we need to visit about whenever we talk about uh, transformations is there's a change that takes place in all these transformations that we're talking about. Reflections, translations, rotations, dilations. And so we're going to have different images. What we always call our first image that we have is the pre-image. Pre-image. Pre. Before the change. Then we go through a change and then we have an image. Okay? Typically what's going to happen is let's take triangle ABC. Let's transform it into triangle. A new image. Triangle A prime, B prime, C prime. See the little tick marks? This lets me know this is the image after the change. This is the image before the change or the pre-image. We always go from a pre-image to an image, and this is how it's going to be labeled. Triangle ABC and then triangle A prime, B prime, C prime. On reflections, we have lines of reflections or lines that we can reflect things over. We call them a line of reflection. This black line right here would be called the line of reflection. We have triangle ABC. We're going to reflect it across that line. What's it going to look like? Over here in red. The A is going to flip over. 
it's going to be A prime. The B is going to flip over the same distance, it's going to be called B prime. C is going to flip over the same distance, it's going to be called C prime. That's our line of reflection. That's how we would flip something over a line. We also have what's called a point of reflection. Notice that B still stays on top, C still stays on the bottom, the A stays where it's supposed to go. Notice that on the point of reflection, what happens, we're going to reflect this B, point B, across this point, through this point to the other side. Go the same distance to the other side. Notice that it's going to get flipped. So this thing's going to get a turn put into it. Okay? Alright? So what's going to happen is this is going to become our B prime. C is going to end up on top. And A is going to end up where we would expect it. The difference between a line of reflection and a point of reflection. Okay? So we can reflect across a line. We can also reflect across a point. It's known of line of reflection and point of reflection. Two different types that you need to be familiar with and practice and know how to do and know how to recognize. Also, the pre-image, the image before the transformation, and the image after and how we name it. Triangle ABC, and then we do our transformation, our reflection, and we call it triangle A prime, B prime, C prime, or A tick, B tick, C tick. Another way that we can look at reflections besides just across a line of reflection or across a point of reflection is we can look at reflections on the coordinate grid. And what we've got here is we've got a table of what happens, the type of reflection on that coordinate grid, what the rules are, uh, a statement of those rules, and then some examples. For instance, we can reflect across the x-axis. When we reflect across the x-axis, what happens? Here's our original, A and B. The B becomes a what? Whatever the B is, we negate it. Okay? What are the rules? Multiply the y-coordinate by negative 1. That's what we did. What's an example? An example is we're going to flip it across the x-axis, which means it's going to whoop, just go across the x-axis. We're going to fold this and make a mirror image on the bottom of the x-axis. Notice that A is negative 1, 1. It goes to A prime of negative 3, negative 1. B, which is 2, 2, goes to B prime of 2 and negative 2. We multiplied the Y coordinate by negative 1. When we reflect across the Y axis or flip across the Y axis, what happens? Well, the X axis, we multiply the Y coordinate by negative 1. What do you think? Go across the y-axis, we're going to move the x-coordinate. We're going to, move, going to multiply the x-coordinate by negative 1. What does that look like? Start with a. 1, negative 2. It becomes negative 1, negative 2. The b becomes, which is 3, 3, becomes negative 3, 3. So what happens is we make a mirror image across the y-axis. Fold that, the line of reflection becomes the y-axis. Okay, now... Let's go across a point, that point being the origin. So this is a point reflection across the origin. What happens to the A and the B? We make both of them negative. If they're both positive, then they're going to be both negative. If they're both negative, they're going to become positive. Okay, whatever they are, we're going to multiply both X and Y coordinates by negative 1. Example, we have an A at negative at 1, 3 going to do both, it becomes a negative, a prime becomes negative 1, negative 3. It's flipping across this point of origin. So instead of being in quadrant 1, it's going to be in quadrant 3. Over here, we've got B, 3, ne negative 3. It's going to become, because we multiply both coordinates by negative 1, it's going to become negative 3 and 3. So B prime is negative 3 and 3. It goes across the origin from coordinate qu quadrant 4 to quadrant 2. Now, another reflection we have on the coordinate grid is across a line, y equals x1, y equals x. That line, you should remember, looks just like this black line here. Okay, it's diagonal with a slope of 1, positive slope of 1. What's the rule? 
A and B change places. All right, they actually change places. X and Y coordinates change places. So what's going to happen? We have an A of negative 3, 3. Well, if those change places, then my A prime is going to be 3, negative 3. So from the second quadrant to the, okay, across that line. All right, just to fold on that line. B, which is 1, 3, they're going to change places. B prime becomes 3, 1. Okay? So reflections on the coordinate grid. We can reflect across the x-axis, which is a line of reflection. We can reflect across the y-axis, which is, again, a vertical line of reflection. We can re reflect across the origin, which is a point of reflection. Okay? And then we can also reflect across any line that's on there. And this particular line would be a line of reflection. And what are the rules? The rules for this one are the x and y coordinates change places. You need to know these. These will be on test. They'll be on your chapter test, your six weeks test, and also your semester and end of year test. You need to know how to do reflections across the coordinate grid, what the, role, what the rules are, how to make these changes, and how to recognize what these reflections are. The last part of reflections, this part of transformations called reflections that we're going to talk about is really, I think, some of the most interesting because it's the artistic and creative part of the reflections that you can use. And it's called symmetry. Does a figure have symmetry? Does it have line symmetry and does it have point symmetry? Line symmetry for a figure simply means that it can be folded so the two halves match exactly. And what we've got here is we've got three examples, very simple examples, of line symmetry. Here's a rectangle. Now a rectangle can be folded in two ways to make two exact halves. We can fold it horizontally, we call it a hot dog fold, and when we fold that, then the top half exactly matches the bottom half. We can also fold it vertically, which would be a hamburger fold, and that the right side matches the left side. So it has two lines of symmetry. Okay? Let's take a square. Square, being a rectangle, of course, has the same lines of symmetry that a rectangle has, but it also has two more. What are those two li extra lines of symmetry? They are the lines of symmetry through the diagonals. Why? Because both sides, all the sides are equal, so we have two more lines of symmetry. So a square would have four lines of symmetry where we could fold and make uh, exact halves. Now, an isosceles triangle has two sides congruent, has one line of symmetry. We can draw a line straight down from the vertex through the center of the base, fold that onto itself, and one half would equal the other side. Point symmetry is a little different. Point symmetry, a figure has point symmetry if it has a common point that can be used as a point of reflection. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to demonstrate this. Um, what we're going to do is we have a point here in the center. And if I start here and reflect this point all the way across, it would be there. Then as I come down here, I reflect this point the same distance, so forth and so on. And as I begin to reflect these points across, guess what? As I reflect half of this, then what I should be making is I should be making the other half. Okay, you get to this corner, that corner. Here, here, so forth and so on. And if I were to do that continuously, then what I should have is I should have come back to where I am. So that has what we call point symmetry. In other words, I can take this point, reflect it across here, take the next point, reflect it across, and so on. And as I reflect this point across this point on the figure, across this point of symmetry, then I create the other half of the figure. That's known as point symmetry. Circle is very, very, very common, of course. I take this point, reflect it across here. I come across over here. I can reflect this point over here. Reflect this point over here, over here, over here, the same distance apart. Okay, and as I do this, guess what? I make the other half, and as I connect that, then I'm going to get me a circle, which, of course, a circle has point symmetry. I think one of the most interesting is 
uh, not the most interesting, but simple, is the letter S. As I come across here and do this reflection across here, I get that point, and then I get this point, and then I come on across. Oh, it won't look exactly like this. It'll look more like this. Okay. Okay, and so what I end up with is, as I reflect the top part of the S across this point, then I reflect, I get the other half of it down on the bottom. So this is said to have point symmetry. I can reflect one half of the figure across a point and create the other half of it. Known as point symmetry. Line symmetry and point symmetry. The last piece of our reflections. A lot of material to go over. Understand. Vocabulary. Uh, welcome to Reflections. <laughs>